Hello and welcome to Easy Like a Sunday Morn. I'm your host, Shane Lockwood, and this is episode 27 on the 28th day of September 2014. And today's show is going to be a little bit longer than usual because I have an interview with Raggy Ragsdale. How awesome is that? That's pretty awesome. I actually recorded quite a lot of uh, audio, so what I'm going to do is split his interview into several parts, and that interview will come to you over the next few weeks. I don't know how many parts yet. I haven't bothered to edit it completely. I just took um, as much as I could from what we were talking about. So stay tuned. And I want to say thank you to everybody who tunes in each and every week and welcome aboard to those who are listening for the first time. Hey, Reggie, how are you going? I'm great, Shane. Thank you for having me back on. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, How have you been? Oh, great. Been fantastic. Uh, Last time, and I have to say that last time we had you on the show, um, the podcast went through the roof by in terms of uh, views, ratings, etc. Um, did really, really well. And in Glad that, to hear that. Yeah, um, I was grateful for that too. Now, I think, and you've done a few shout outs for the podcast, and that's brought a few people over, and um, I've picked up a few subscribers from that. So thank you very much for that. For sure. Um, and I know that there's uh, quite a few individuals who will listen to that program over and over again. Because I think you had some decent advice um, that they could relate to. So I'm grateful for that and uh, for those people who listen to the show every week. But particularly, they, they listen to that show every now and again when they're feeling down or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's, that's fantastic of you to do that. Okay. Yep. Um, now, last time you mentioned, just in passing, uh, some of your paranormal experiences. Would you be interested in talking about that on today's show? I don't mind talking about it at all. Okay. So, what kind of paranormal experiences have you had? Just as a general overview. Okay, well, the best thing is for people who are into the paranormal, I have a lot of friends who put up videos, I watch them every day. Um, My perspective comes from an area of uh, sheer, I don't know. I do not believe in ghosts. I do not believe in flying saucers or uh, reincarnation or so many things that many people do. However... Having experienced a lot of unexplained things, I am not going to deny that I have not seen interesting, very interesting things in my life. But uh, since I can't explain them, I'm still not going to break down and say they're ghosts or anything else. But they look like it in a couple of my videos, according to all my friends who believe. And so here's the the way this goes. Um, all my life, my background comes from the hills of Tennessee, and my family all had gifts. Let's just call it gifts. Yeah. And we all have them in our family. And so all my life, I have been familiar with, say, people coming in and saying, you'll never guess what happened. And then, of course, I nail it straight on the head. I don't know where the information comes from, but I don't miss. And I mean, sometimes it's to the penny. Um, In college, many times I would sit up and say to one of my friends, go answer the phone. And they said, it's two in the morning. I said, just go ahead. So they'd start down the hall and the phone would ring and it'd of course be for me. I don't understand that. I've lived with it, so it does not bother me. In the early days, it amused me. It fascinated me. And then it began to scare my friends. And so what I did was I just totally stopped yeah. any of that, stopped talking about it. But the last place that I worked, I worked there for over nine years. Yep. And it was in an office. Yep. 
in a cemetery. Yep. Underneath my desk were three graves. Yeah. Because they built that building over the old cemetery. Yeah. When I got there, I began to experience strange things. The first week I was there, I, you know me, I stay up all mm -hmm. night, every night. I'm up, up 3, 4 o'clock in the morning every day. I want to get two hours, three hours of sleep. I can't. Yeah. If I get more, I can't handle myself. So the first uh, night I was in there past midnight, about, I guess, a minute or two after midnight, I heard a commotion in the front room. Well, we talked about this, uh, what had happened a year or so ago, yeah, two yeah. years ago. And, uh, well, actually it happened 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I opened the door, and there was no one in the place. It was after midnight, and I was the only guy that worked there. There was never anybody in the place. And yeah. so I turned the light on the room, and all of the books that were on all of the shelves had thrown themselves all the way across the room yeah. and landed, you know, it slid down on the floor. Well, mm. I just said, okay, <clears throat> turned out the lights, I went home. <laughs> Came back next morning, picked it all up. And that would happen frequently. And I got used to the fact that it happened. And I determined that's the signal for me to go home. Mm. And then as I would sit around the office day and night with all the lights on in the daytime. I would hear things, turn around and see stuff moving around on the shelves behind me on one of the long desks. Guitars would play by themselves. Instruments would play in the office. The, the cleaning staff, we went through several because yeah. occasionally one of them would come over just white as a sheet and say, there's something in the church. And I said, what do you mean there's something in the church? Mm. And they would say, we can hear music. So I'd go over. There was no music. Yeah. But they would, they, they would quit. I mean, they, it just got to them. Shadows would move in my office occasionally. And I just, and, and I keep my windows sealed and taped just like in this room here. Yeah. I don't let the light in. I've never have. I always put tinfoil over the windows or whatever. So if I turn out the light in the daytime, it's a tarp. Yeah. And... So I got used to seeing and hearing events in my office and around the area because it was in a cemetery. And one day we had some visitors come in from another city and they knew me and they came into the office. Well, the son did. And strangely enough, he later became a mortician. <laughs> but he came into the office and I was working on Sunday morning sermon and typing away on the old computer. And suddenly he shrieked, oh, my God, look at that. And I was still typing. I said, what is it? He said, that bottle is moving by itself. It was a big bottle, yeah. a full bottle. And I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I kept typing. He said, well, aren't you going to turn around and look? I said, no, I see it all the time. Uh, I said, it's nothing unusual. So mm -hmm. 20 minutes later, his mother walks in, and we're talking, and she shrieks. And she says, oh, my gosh, those bottles back there are <laughs> moving all by themselves. And I thought, mm, mm hmm mm hmm <laughs> Well, we had some paranormal folks in. Mm. And I was talking, when they heard about some of this, they, they came by. Three groups actually wanted to come set up their TV cameras mm. in the my office and in that building. And I told them, uh-uh, no, that's the last thing I need because all of my friends know I don't believe in this kind of stuff. And if you guys shoot a video of me in there, I will never live it down. Yeah. I said, no, it's not going to happen. Had a, um, an exorcist drive all the way up from Florida. Wow. And said, I've come to rid your office of these, these ghosts. And I yeah. said, you're not going to set foot in that building. I don't believe in ghosts. But here's the deal. If they turn out to be real, I'm not going to be ashamed, embarrassed, or, or angry. But if you come in here and you fool around with something, you're going to leave. But i got to go back over there tonight and work. Yeah. And I don't want you jacking with anything that might be in that office, uh, whatever it is. Hmm. Now, here is the fun observation, Shane. And I mean, the fun observations were this. I watch a lot of the paranormal stuff. Yeah. I don't mean like my friends. You know, when Scoob and the guys go out in the cemeteries and they, they're looking, they're, they're sincere and serious. I'm talking about the guys that put on the freaky music, get the night vision cameras going, and, and carry on and keep looking and speculating. And I kept thinking... This is happening in the daytime, guys. Why are you going out with flashlights and, and cameras? I just sit here in the office. I, I'm so used to it that it drives me nuts. 
I had 300 YouTube video or 200 and something yeah. that had this stuff in it. And when I realized it, I took them all down. And my daughter came in and she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm deleting every video that's got this kind of stuff in it. And she said, please don't delete. And she named two. Mm. And I said, why? She said, I want my friends to see it. And I said, there's nothing in it, sweetness. There, there's nothing in that video. And here was the fun part. It had been up for over two weeks. A mess of people said to me, there's something mm. not right in that video. I and, I, and I looked at it for two weeks. I couldn't see a thing. Mm. Well, I was using a TV for oh, my monitor. Okay. And so Kimberly said, Wow, I need a TV. And uh, I said, gosh, I bought you a brand new, beautiful digital monitor for your birthday. She said, oh. And I thought, oh, would you like this thing? It was huge. It was a big TV. Yeah. And she said, yes. And so I gave it to her. And then I came over to the office. I hooked it up. And someone made a comment about the video. You know how that goes. You yeah. go to the video and then you reply. So the video was playing while I was doing my reply saying there's nothing here and I happened to look up toward the end of that video and I saw that thing <laughs> and I thought whoa that's that's interesting yeah it walked right through me through my desk through the wall as it went through my desk into that room which passed through the bookshelf where all the books fly yeah and I thought oh my god there's something here well shooting a stupid ukulele video just a little while later and I'm just having a good time. I don't even remember the name of the silly little ukes. It was just fun. It was a Sunday afternoon and as I'm getting toward the end of the ukulele video about five or six minutes in a prayer bell 15 feet across the room, across the desk from me, rang by itself. The guitar played a big ping. You couldn't hear it in the video, but I sure heard it because mm -hmm. it was right behind me about five feet. And in the monitor, I saw the guitar move. Oh, wow. And that's when I said to the folks, well, gang, that's Uncle Reggie's signal. It's time to leave. And I shut it down. And that when she called, she said, I want you to leave it up. She said, I got some friends I'm just going to enjoy that. Mm -hmm. So I left it up. So many people wrote about it. I went in and I don't ever edit, but I did that. And I took out everything except for those two moments yeah. so that people didn't have to watch the entire guitar video and the entire youth video. Yeah. Now, in the meantime, another paranormal bunch came by and they were in the outer room. I was in my office and the door was open. We were talking to each other and the blinds from the window ripped out came down underneath the coating that I had, the covers and the quilts over the window, came underneath it, hit the floor, came up the back of a lazy boy chair, what's the same one I have here, yeah. and slid down into the chair like it was sitting there. Wow. I saw it. They saw it. And I thought, uh-uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, don't even, don't say a word. And the guy was just freaking out. He said he'd never seen anything like that ever. It was in, you know, the broad daylight. Yeah. And two or three of those things happened about the same time that day while they were there. And I finally said to everybody, you, you got to go. We got to go. Not because I believe, but because they do. Mm -hmm. And I knew they were going to be camping out. And sure enough, <laughs> I would hear it two in the morning. I'd go outside. These guys would be hiding behind tombstones with their cameras. Um, <laughs> and I thought, come on, fellas. I got enough trouble without this. Well, yeah. you're ready for the big one. <laughs> we had a court of honor. I mean, out of the hundreds of things that happened, this was the moment. My son was home from college. I went as the chaplain, as it were, for that court of honor. They asked me would I have the opening prayer. Well, since I was a preacher at the church, you think I was going to say no. Yeah. And so then they asked my son Chance to sing. So we sat in the back of the church, two scoutmasters in the front, and the Eagle Scout. I mean, it was an Eagle Scout um, ceremony. The mm -hmm. Eagle Scout was one of the scoutmaster's sons. Yeah, He's a member of the church. They all were. Mm -hmm. I'm two rows from the back. My son is the last row on the other side of the aisle, and so they call on me for the for the prayer. Well, I had thought, you know what, I'm I've got Native American blood in me. I'm going to throw in a couple of phrases, 
in the native tongue. And I did. And I didn't get it right. Even when I said it, I thought, oh, man, I thought I knew what I was saying, but halfway through, I don't know what I said. But I thought, nobody knows the difference. So we let it go. We're sitting there, and there's a noise. And when I heard the noise, I thought, I recognized that noise. It was on a Saturday afternoon, about 4 o'clock. <laughs> Bright sunshine coming through the windows. You know, cheap imitation stained glass. It was not dark. All the lights were on. And I looked over across the piano into the wall and saw it get bright. And then a fireball literally came out of the woodwork. It just floated out, came up over the piano toward the congregation, well, the audience in this case. And it stopped like a cartoon, just froze. And then it turned to the left and started up quickly toward the scoutmasters and the Eagle Scout to be. It got within inches of the scoutmaster's face and it froze again. It was like a comedy. Everybody, 80 people about in that sanctuary saw this thing. And I was tickled because I saw them all the time. It went back, zipped out to the front of the church, back to the piano, and then went slowly back to the wall where it touched it. And then it just moved back into the wall and disappeared. When it was over, I asked everybody, did you see anything? Some of them were scared to death. And a couple of them were saying that we saw a ghost. I said, yeah, you didn't see a ghost. I don't know what we saw, but you didn't see a ghost. That was the fun part, because everyone in that church knows these things happen. That's yeah. where I met Henry. You've heard about yeah. Henry. And if you haven't, you need to know about Henry. Henry, according to the local members, is a ghost. Okay. Now, here it is, Shane. I don't believe, but this is where it gets sticky. My wife is confused. Because when she loses something, I'll say to her, have you asked Henry? And she says, you don't believe in ghosts. Why do you do this? That's just wrong. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, well, I'll ask Henry. Here's the way it works. When people lose things at that church, they would say, have you asked Henry? And I never knew what they meant. Yeah. One day, my friend, Bibi. He's in a lot of my videos, and he is not an easily convinced person. Yeah. We were filming downtown. We had a marvelous camera and a beautiful stand and all kinds of uh, rigging. When we got back to the church, we realized the handle had fallen out back on the street. Yeah. We heard it. We didn't realize what it was, and we didn't have a handle. Well, we were going to order one. I looked for it for four weeks, mm -hmm. and then talking to B.B., he said, have you asked Henry? And I said, ask Henry what? He said, Henry finds things. And I said, <laughs> okay, all right, you know I don't believe in this. He said, ask Henry. So I said, <clears throat> Henry, we lost the crank to our uh, tripod. Can you help me find it? B.B.'s in the outer office again. I walk through the door, going to my desk where I go a hundred times a day. Yeah. I stepped on that handle. It was right there in the walkway. And I picked it up, and B.B. just laughed, and I just looked at that thing. I thought, I don't believe this. That's not even possible. From then on, when I lose things, I say, I ask Henry after I've looked, and 95% or better at the time, it comes right now. And the people I've shared it with have tried it. Several have done it in the U.K., uh, it might even work in Australia. <laughs> so that's my experience with the paranormal. I have seen those things that cannot be explained. <laughs> and I saw a lot more of those things that cannot be explained. And it's difficult. Now, it paid off all the years <laughs> I was in ministry. Yeah. And I'm retired, and I don't do ministry anymore. I mean, I really don't, not that kind. But I would go into a hospital room. And then I could come out and I'd go home and say to my wife, well, they say, he's getting better. I said, no, he will be He will be gone tomorrow. And she say, how would you know? I said, because I could see. And I told her what I saw on their faces. <laughs> she went to the hospital two or three times to visit friends. She came out one day and she was shaking. And I said, what, what is it? She said, I saw that thing on her face. I said, oh, yeah, it was there the whole time. And I said, she'd be gone, you know, tomorrow. And she died 
very early in that morning, about four o'clock or so. Mm. And I said, you know, that's just something that is. I don't know what it is, but I can see it. I've always been able to see it. I never looked at the congregation when I was preaching because if I did, I knew what was going on. And so many of them would come up and say, please, you know, don't look at me because when you do, it scares me. Mm. And I said, I understand. I have frightened people my whole life. I don't mean to, and that's why I don't watch you. I'm an auditory. I just listen because if I look at you, I'm through. I will be, I was, I was preaching. And I would look down and see somebody, and then I wouldn't even realize what I had said. And afterwards, they'd come up and say, how did you know that? How did you possibly know that? And you were talking directly to me. And I said, I don't even remember it. Yeah. And that's why I don't look. So that's the kind of experience that I've had. I hear a lot of things. Uh, my hearing is so acute that when we sit in a restaurant, uh, I can hear every conversation at every table. I used to tell my wife what people were talking about and it drives her crazy because she says nobody can hear that good you need to get your ears checked and I thought you got to be kidding me right mm-hmm. she's talking on the cell phone I can hear everything the other person say and I quit telling her about that because it scares her it scares people mm-hmm. and so that's that's some of it I, I, I see so much of it and oh, uh, was in a hospital room once and the man was within moments of going away. And here's one thing a lot of people don't know, is that when you die, for about 15 minutes, you can still hear, you can still see. Mm. And what I always did was I I called it, walk them down to the river. Because they were confused, they were hearing this information, he's gone, he's passed away, the family's screaming and crying, being shook and handled. And I would say to them sometimes, leave the room. He's fixing to take a trip because his wife would say, why are his hands so cold? And I said, because he's, he's turning loose and he's fixing to leave and he needs somebody to take him down to the river. And that's what I would do. I'd, I'd pick him up and I'd hold him in my arms and, and I would say to him, I'm here. You're not alone. And now you've discovered something. This body I'm holding, you know, is dead. What you're feeling is you are finally letting go of this machine. But you don't need to go down there by yourself. And I won't let you. That's what I do. Hmm. It still drives me crazy. Hmm. I I mean, truly it does. And I hear things. And and I see things. And and, and I don't promote it as paranormal activity. And I don't shoot videos as paranormal activity. I just turn on the webcam and shoot. 95% Ninety-five yeah. percent of the time. Sometimes, when my stupid camera won't upload, I'll have to move it over to another program, and then I'll think, oh, you know, and I'll cut something out. But um, you know, I never mimic or gimmick around. I'm, I'm trying to learn some for the Alien series. Yeah. I'm trying to learn how to do it, <laughs> and it's it's not easy. I don't know how these folks can do such creative things because, man, it is tough to fake those things. Mm. And the best part for me is that when people see those things, I'm hoping they will think, oh, Rags got a sense of humor. He's just fun in us. Because I do not want to promote something that I so strongly <laughs> don't believe in. It's just not right. So anyhow, that's it. Long story. I bored everybody to tears. I didn't mean to take up almost all your time. So any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. No, no. Um, what I was going to say was that I have seen the videos that you're talking about and yeah like so what what had happened was when i saw them i thought you because i knew you were deleting the other ones and yeah. my stance was not um from the, the that of a believer uh it was more of a stance of um not uh, unbelief even though i have had a uh I'm going to put this. I did have a spiritual background, a uh, religious upbringing, upbringing, spiritual background, believed in the paranormal, etc. And then I became a little bit more skeptical and uh, more focused on evidence, if that makes sense. Right. So, oh, yeah. So when I said, oh, could you, you know, you say you have a what, the, what you would call a book event, which is where you hear a noise.
he's in the next room, you go into the next room and books have been knocked off the shelf. That's why I was saying, well, could you film it? Could you set up a night vision camera could, or whenever it was happening? Because oh, yeah, it, I tried it all of, the time. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, which reminds me. Mm. God, this is shame. You can't know what it's like to be me in this situation because I can explain these things in the language of people who believe. Even though I don't, I can really do it. And mm. here is something for them to think about. When some of these people, and oh God, I can't believe I'm doing this. When some of these people died, some of these graves went back to the 1700s. Yeah. They had no concept of what we have in technology. Yeah. So when I would be sitting there with a camera on, they would be fooling around behind me because my back was turned to them. They seemed to have no recognition that I could see everything happening behind me by looking in the monitor. And when I would address it, they would just flee. They would just evaporate. Yeah. Uh, the fireballs would suddenly stop bouncing around and just go poof and be gone. The orbs that would float across the room would just stop yeah. and just sort of circle and boom, they're gone. And I thought, they don't even know <laughs> that we can see them. And what they don't also know or realize is I was not afraid of them. I never was. I never felt fearful of them. Some of the things startled me. But I was never, people said, well, you need to do that. I said, no, they've never hurt me. They could. Those books flying, it could be the ones behind me. They could kill me. Mm. They don't. And I think they enjoy uh, company. Yeah. And it's okay with me. And the thing is here, I hear myself saying that. I don't believe in this. <laughs> and yet I can't explain it rationally. And here's the other thing, and now you will get it. The reason I didn't want any of that information getting out is because sometimes in the past when it did, some widow or widower would come to me begging me to try to contact uh, that lost spirit. And that, as a minister, particularly in the Protestant church, <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> and yeah, that. so I would say I'm not going to do that. But I have talked to and addressed many people who have gone before. Mm. And I remember once, and it was okay. She was a very nice lady. She had lost her husband, and she was so lonely. And so I did the, I just did the unimaginable. Oh. I stopped her at the church, and I said, now, here's the deal. When you go to bed tonight, you're going to have a visit from a friend. She called the next morning early, and she said, I was laying there in bed. She said, I heard him come into the room. He spoke my name, talked to me. I felt him when he just lay down on the bed next to me like he had for 50, 60 years. And I felt so comfortable. And I said, yeah, I told you, you were going to have a visitor tonight. I, I mean, last night, I, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I wasn't going to tell you who it was. And she said it was the greatest thing that ever was. And I said, please do me a favor. Don't tell us so. And she never did. And it was kind of wonderful. Well, she mentioned it, I think, to my wife once in passing. But Denise has gotten so used to me screwy <laughs> me that I am that... She just laughs at all. <laughs> but when Denise loses stuff five times a day, everything, keys, you name it, she loses everything. Yeah. And I go over to help her. I said, did you ask Henry? So she'll get mad. And then she said, I left it right there on the table. There was nothing on the table. She would go to the other room. I'd go to the other room. Then I would come back in there and say, Henry, where is it? I would look. It would be right there on the table <laughs> where she left it. I'd just carry it to her and give it to her. And then I would say this, anytime that he does this, I said, you know, the magic code word, the code word is, thank you, Henry. Because if you do that, he will continue to do that. But she never thanks him. And so I have to thank him for <laughs> Rouge, I need to do this. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Yeah. So, yeah. good deal. Put that thing down. I don't think that, uh, I think with the alien, ancient alien series that Gazza is doing, I don't think that anybody sees it as anything other than parody, because that's, that's what it's designed to be. Man, I hope they don't. Uh, you know, Stinky Boy Floyd, I don't know if you've ever seen any of his stuff, but he does tremendous nature videos yeah. from Alaska. Oh, oh wow. gosh, they're beautiful. And he put up a little joke yesterday, a big bubble. 
it had two bubbles on it. It looked like an alien. And I mm. called, I mean, I got in touch with guys and I said, you got to watch this. I've already talked to him. We can use it. You can use it. And, and I've got an alien site staked out, Shane. Yeah. And I got a camera person coming back. And we're going to go into the military park wow. and going to take people to one of the monuments. That is absolute proof of ancient alien <laughs> astronaut. <laughs> don't know them to those guys. It is a, a blast yeah. because I don't believe it. <laughs> that stuff <Yeah>. either. <laughs> so it's kind of fun, you know, reporting. Yeah. But I do watch every one of the TV shows about that ancient yeah. aliens, yeah. you know, all that stuff. I just find it fascinating. I, I, and it's not a, it's not offensive. And you know what? If it turns out the aliens land in my backyard and come knock on the door and say, you the guy that don't believe? And I say, uh-huh. I say, well, we're here. And I keep saying, cool. <laughs> well, how do you feel? In Paris, she ain't no. I, it's exciting. I, I won't feel bad if it turns out to be true. I just don't believe it. Like you, evidence. And, oh, you know, the anecdotal stuff. My experience is only evidence for me. I yeah. can't put it out there for somebody else and expect them to believe it. I don't even believe it when I see it. If it's yeah. true, I don't believe a single thing I see in the paranormal videos on, on YouTube. But they're fun to watch. Oh yeah, a lot of it is all fake. Um, a lot of it's intentionally fake uh, to get oh, yeah. views and stuff like this. It's all out of focus, um, poor resolution, very quick editing, and that, that sort of stuff. I've tried to do it, but I I've done a few videos that are like that, but my, I, the editing software that I have is old. I really need to upgrade this computer before I was to do anything really serious because uh, people will pick, pick things apart very, very quickly. But, I'm doing, oh, yeah. but the thing is, I know people that they do these things and they're making money with them because people like to come in and say, oh, this is fake. This is fake. Mm -hmm. This is fake. This is crap. But, but, pe but yeah, people but, want to believe. Not just that they want to believe. I think people want to be right. So yeah. So you can, start, you can go through and just debunk uh, like a Bigfoot video or a UFO or Loch Ness or whatever. Pe people want to like communicate. And I think what what's happening is that the people that are doing these videos are doing it just for the feedback, just for, um, just so they have the the, the audacity, so they can have the feel good ego boost of saying that this is mm -hmm. fake, you know, and uh, yeah. and I think they don't really care because as long as the money rolls in. And well, 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 listen, hey Shane, I tell you, between you and me, if we started making a couple of three hundred bucks a week, I could real fast uh, get out there in the cemeteries too. <laughs> I can <laughs> see it. <laughs> I'd give it my best shot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, look at yonder. Did you hear that? Oh, Dave looks like a freaking angel out there. <laughs> yeah, that's the ones that kill me. Yeah. Our local guys do it. And we have enough trouble here in Mississippi with who we are and our accents and stuff. And to have one of them come on and say, This is Bobo and Jack and Jane. We was out there and we seen this thing come right up out the ground. And you keep thinking, Oh, God, even if it's real, you guys really don't need to be on. On, on camera. Yeah. Please don't do this to us. Now, here it is. I live in Vicksburg. Mm. It is reputed to be the most haunted city in the country, if not the world. Yeah. And we have uh, ghost tours here every day. I mean, they take you to houses where people experience stuff, and it's not their fixed houses. They're homes that have been owned here for 100, 200 years by people. And the military part, 17,000 men died in, in the same war. Yeah. And there's a lot that goes on here um, <laughs> that I just have to not believe so I won't go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that was the end of the interview. Thank you for listening for this long. And Raggy has something to say to all of his fans right here. Well, kitties. Oh, geezers. I sign. <laughs> Password. <laughs> Until next we meet, this is old Uncle Raggy saying bye. It's also time for me to say bye for another week. But before I go, if you like the show, please click like once on YouTube and click the little love heart on Spreaker. Feel free to follow me on YouTube, Spreaker, Stitcher, 
iTunes and tune in and if possible leave a review if you haven't already those reviews are very very helpful they help me a lot uh, every rating helps me in the charts and now Stitcher is also um, boosting and tweeting this podcast as it goes live which is absolutely fantastic and and I know you guys have been hanging out for the code word for this week which is beer B W E R beer no I don't drink alcohol this is I'm looking at a uh, a diet ginger beer bottle diet I love ginger beer I'm not addicted I promise anyway that's all for this week please tune in for the rest of the interviews with Raggy Ragsdale next week and I hope that the rest of today and the rest of this week is easy like a Sunday morning. Bye for now.